Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. How could I not be good? I'm wearing my brand new trout shirt. Where are you, Matt? That's my I, next question. I happen to be in, Sar in a hotel in Saratoga. Oh, you got there early. I love it, Matt. Uh, <laughs> but for now, racing at Belmont is what we're going to focus on. We're going to take to the turf this weekend, Matt. We got two million dollar turf races at Belmont on Saturday. That's going to be our main focus. But before that, I want to go back Go back to the uh, to, to the Cornhusker, Matt. Prairie Meadows, go back to Iowa. Join me, will you, as we watch Nick's go just roll down the lane in this Cornhusker, Matt. Impressive performance. Big bounce back after his losses in Saudi Arabia and the Met Mile. Yeah, if, you, if you're a Nick's go fan, you saw everything that you wanted to see in that race. Uh, just dominated on the front end. And clearly... Uh, He's at his best going to turns where his speed is, you know, is speed that can control races as opposed to the Met Mile where he had to deal with that sprinter kind of speed. Yeah, and even in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, he faced some real fast early speed there too. But I think you're right. The bottom line is I agree with you. I think he's only better when they get to go two turns and there's not as much speed to deal with. Plus, he's not coming back from Saudi Arabia this time around like he was in the Met Mile. That, that's, that's part of the equation, I believe, as well. But anyway, you know, I've, I've seen it time and time again. I've, I've all year long, I've been on the Maxfield bandwagon as my horse for the Breeders' Cup Classic. But I, I tell you what, Nick's go is going to be a little bit forgotten in the shuffle because people think of him as a speed horse. And I've been guilty of this over the years too, where I kind of discount, well, they're not a real 10 furlong horse or as good a 10 furlong horse as others. But I tell you what, Matt, that kind of speed that Nick's go has is very dangerous. And if there's not a lot of speed for him to worry about out at Del Mar in the Breeders' Cup Classic, I think he becomes one of the horses to beat. I agree. You can't, you know, you cannot dismiss, uh, Nick's go moving ahead, ahead. And yeah, it's going to be interesting when he need, when he has to start facing really quality fields and competition also, but he moved way up uh, in my uh, top 10 poll voting uh, this past week. Absolutely. A big performance out of Prairie Meadows last Friday night. And Matt, uh, it looks like he will get uh, tougher competition next week because they're already talking about the nine furlong Whitney at Saratoga and uh, horses like Silver State and Maxfield are also pointed there. So we're already looking forward to the Whitney with Nick's Go. Hey folks, I wanna remind you, if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Turn those notifications on. It really helps us out here at your favorite webcast for horse racing. Matt, let's go back to Belmont where we started to talk about the turf. Let's start with a million dollar, one and a quarter mile on the inner turf, the Belmont Derby, Matt, it's a grade one and it's got an international uh, field, two Europeans, seven Americans. Uh, let's start, let's start with the Americans because I think du jour is on a bit of a roll. Absolutely on a, a bit of a roll and, and certainly a very interesting story. The, the role that du jour is on three wins in a row, uh, a maiden, an allowance at Santa Anita, and then out to Churchill Downs on the Kentucky Derby uh, undercard to win the American turf, a grade two asterisk. All of those wins were for Bob Baffert. DeJure is no longer being trained by Bob Baffert. DeJure is now in the barn of Bill Mott. And when you're talking about a turf, court, a turf horse, Brian, that can't be a bad thing move into the barn of that Hall of Famer. Yeah, well, he was on a roll on the turf before he got to Belmont. Uh, now he's in Belmont's barn. I'm not sure what that means for this start. I'll tell you what, though. I, this is not a horse I'm going to be betting. I, he was my pick in the American turf, and uh, I was able to win some money that day on Kentucky Derby Day. But this is a horse who's never been farther than a mile of 16th. He's caught some firm turf courses, Never been more than a mile 16th. Now he has to go to Belmont at a mile and a quarter. I think for me, he's a bet against in here. Although the son of Temple City certainly could handle a distance and could move up to the distance. But uh, at the odds, I'm going to try to beat him, Matt. 
Okay, fair enough, Brian. Cellist is a, uh, another American turf stakes winner, Matt. The son of Big Blue Kitten who's trained by Rusty Arnold. Uh, the last three races on the turf, he's first, second, a close second, and then he won the Audubon last time at Churchill Downs. Right, a listed stake, but you know, I don't know how much we can hold that against him in this field where, uh, where none of the horses, inclu including the Euros, have won a grade one or a group one. So, uh, you know, in this kind of field, uh, he, he fits in as a horse that we're going to assume is now just beginning to find his best. Yeah, and, and the Audubon, to tell you the truth, Matt, I know those horses at Churchill Downs, that was graded stakes quality. Uh, this horse uh, got to the lead on a slow pace there, but he is a versatile horse who can also rally. So I think Cellist is one of the ones to watch out. Well, we've talked about maybe two of the American, at least the stakes winners from the Americans uh, on the grass, but let's, let's not hold off the Europeans any longer, Matt. I think the favorite and I think the horse to beat is Bolshoi Ballet, son of Galileo, trained by Aidan O'Brien. This is a familiar tune when we come to the Belmont Derby every summer. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Aiden O'Brien's got so many horses, and and he knows where the big uh, payouts are around the the world. The million dollars usually draws some Aiden O'Brien horses coming over, and Bolshoi Ballet is uh, is one of them. He's got two uh, nice Grade Twos at Leopardstown in um, Ireland, and, and you know, fans, if you don't know much about. Um, you uh, European racing and you do know something about the racetracks that that's always a good measuring stick uh, with European runners where are they running what kind of track and how are they doing so Bolshoi Ballet has uh, two group two wins at one of the top tracks in Ireland. Yeah, Matt, those, those two group three wins in Ireland uh, really kind of uh, set him apart as one of the top three-year-olds in, in, in Europe. And he was actually favored in the big one, the, uh, the English Derby uh, in his last start. I don't think he liked the trip. It was 12 furlongs, a little bit more cut in the grass that day. And he actually came out with a cut on his leg. So poor performance as the favorite in the English Derby. But I think uh, Bolshoi Ballet is certainly a horse to beat in here. O'Brien's done well in this race before. He brings over a very good three-year-old Colt in Bolshoi Ballet. He also brings over a very good filly that we're going to talk about in the Belmont Oaks soon. But Bolshoi Ballet, probably a deserving favorite in this. The other European I want to mention uh, a little bit, Matt, is Tokyo Gold. Tokyo Gold is uh, not coming from the English Ireland uh, circuit that we're so familiar with, with Aidan O'Brien. Actually coming from a win in uh, Italy last time. He won the Italian Derby. Uh, before that, though, he was a nice horse in France. The Italian Derby is certainly not the class of the English Derby by any stretch of the imagination, but it was a very impressive win. And if you look at his races in France, and again, like you said, it's some good racetracks. A horse to watch out for. He'll have much higher odds than Bolshoi Ballet. Uh, good luck with that, Brian. It's the Derby Italiano, uh, just to correct you on that. Uh, Brian. Yeah, he, uh, interestingly, all of his races have been on, on wet turf and, and often very, very wet turf. So it'll be interesting to see uh, uh, how he fares on the harder uh, Belmont Park uh, turf, particularly on Saturday if there hasn't been any rain because uh, uh, it'll, it'll be a different kind of track. Yes, it will. That's true. The one thing the advantage the uh, Europeans, I think, do have here is the distance. As I mentioned, du Jour has never been more than mile 16th. These uh, Europeans are well suited to a mile and a quarter or more. Uh, so that's an advantage for the Europeans at this time of year. Matt, another horse on the list that I, we think we need to mention here is St. Hood. St. Hood will be making his first start on the turf, although he's fared well both on a sloppy track and a synthetic surface in stakes races before. Yeah, he was entered uh, for the turf in the Penine Ridge last time, but rain uh, took it off onto a sloppy track. And, you know, be, the, between uh, uh, that nice win on a sloppy track and his really good performance on the synthetic, both of those are pointing to uh, uh, are usually good indicators of a horse that's going to do well on the turf. You guys know that I, I've always liked this horse. I like the horse going into the Derby. I still like the horse. So I'm not going to dismiss St. Hood as a possibility in this race. 
No, nah, he's hard to dismiss. I, I wonder what the betters will do. He's a real wild card to me as far as how much he'll get bet. Will he be the second or third choice or will he be a little higher? But also what he'll do, this is his, it's a tough spot to make your first ever turf race. But I, I agree with you, Matt, that there are indicators that he should like the turf, including the pedigree. So definitely a wild card in here and one you can't dismiss. Out of all the Americans, though, the one I might like the best is Hard Love, Matt. That's the son of Kittens Joy, trained by Jonathan Thomas. You'll remember Jonathan Thomas as the trader of Catholic Boy that won the Travers and the Belmont Derby a few years ago. And Hard Love, I, I think he's got a real developing turf horse on his hands, Matt. Last time he beat older horses at Belmont Park. Yeah, he said he did. He's got, you know, uh, he's got a nice record. Uh, uh, he had a nice Belmont allowance win. He had a win on the turf at Aqueduct in the Woodhaven uh, back, uh, uh, you know, uh, earlier. Um, he's a developing horse. He's pre he likes to press the pace. Jonathan Thomas is good at picking out a race as a target. Um, yeah, certainly one that's got a good future. Yeah, I like the way he finished against good older horses last time. It was only an allowance race, but again, a pretty salty allowance field for older horses that he beat. I like the way he finished that race, Matt. And the fact that he's got some tactical speed, I think, helps in a race without a lot of speed. Of all the Americans, I'll say it again, I think hard love might be the one. Uh, I want to mention one other, Matt, and you might have another one to mention as well. But I want to mention Hidden Enemy. It's a real bomb in here. This is a horse who's only won one out of eight starts. And, and if you look at the form, you're probably quickly going to dismiss him. But he's had some rough trips. He's also run against a lot of good horses. Uh, he traded, uh, he traded uh, positions with Palazzi in the last two races, who's in this race as well. But the one thing I like about him, besides the fact that he's coming off a rough trip last time, is he's really, really bred to get a distance. I think Hidden Enemy might move up the farther they go. And I like the combination of Asmussen and Saez here on a bomb in the Belmont Derby. Should be a bomb, Brian, because certainly when you think about turf racing, even though he's got uh, nine gazillion career wins, you don't think of Steve Asmussen. That's true. And the horse he beat, uh, or, or the horse he's uh, exchanged uh, decisions with in the last two starts at Churchill Downs is Palazzi. And I think he needs to mention that as a, uh, a legitimate horse on uh, stakes races. Uh, maybe he hasn't broken through at this level yet. The veteran, uh, the most experienced horse in this field. Yeah, absolutely. Good Belmont Derby. We're going to give our picks soon, Matt, but we're going to jump to the other big turf race of the day, which is the Belmont Oaks, the female. Uh, version of the Belmont Derby. It's also grade one. It's also a mile and a quarter on the turf. This one's 700,000, Matt. And we could probably start with Aiden O'Brien again here because Santa Barbara, a daughter of Camelot, uh, is coming off a really nice performance last time in the Pretty Poly. Yeah, and Aiden O'Brien won this race back in 2018. Um, again, He's always got his eye on the big uh, purses all over the world. You know, I do, I do want to note, and I, Aiden O'Brien wins so many uh, big stakes races all over the world. Uh, uh, you do need to keep in mind, he takes a lot of shots uh, to, to win those races and ships a, lot of, ships a lot of horses over here to America, has had a lot of success in, in the Breeders' Cup in particular in big races, but, you know, his, his win percentage is not great. Yeah, well, he, he's the best turf trainer in the world, if, if you ask me, as far as what he has every single year. And Santa Barbara, getting back to her, I, I think, again, just like Bolshoi Ballet, I think she's the one to beat in here coming off that pretty poly. It was a big performance. She was actually favored, just like uh, Bolshoi Ballet in the uh, English Oaks. So she's very well respected, too. That, that mile and a half on that wetter turf might not have been her thing either. But she's the one to beat. But we have some strong Americans here, Matt. Two are coming out of the grade three wonder again last time at Belmont. Con Lima was the winner. Plum Alley was uh, a rally in second. Uh, for Todd Pletcher. And, and I don't know, Brian, Todd Pletcher is having one of the best years of his career. Uh, <clears throat> at this point, the first half of the year, he won more graded stakes races than any trainer uh, in the country. And, and things just seem to be going his way. Uh, uh, lately, 11 starts for uh, Con Lima's six career wins, four of them coming this year. Yeah, well, Matt, on turf, her record is six races, five wins, one second. So she's been just terrific. The daughter commissioner has been on the turf. 
And uh, she looks to be, like I said, there's not a lot of speed in the Belmont Derby. There's certainly not a lot of speed in this Belmont Oaks. She looks to be a filly that could go out to the lead and see how far she can take them. And with that record and with that class, a real threat. Plum Ali is always a threat, Matt. She won her first three so nicely last year. She's actually lost three in a row, but not for running uh, poor races. Uh, she's running good races, as she did last time, with a fast closing second behind Con Lima. I think for Christophe Clement, again, she'll get some play in here as well. Yeah, and she should. She started out her uh, career uh, with uh, with three wins in a row as a two-year-old and was fifth in the Breeders' Cup uh, Phillies turf, juvenile turf, which always has a big uh, international and tough field. She, she's a quality horse. Yeah, and it's hard for me not to like her, but on the other hand, without a lot of speed, I just... It's hard for me to pick her in here because of her, her late running style. That, that hurts her, I think, in some races it already has. And I think it might hurt her again here in the Belmont Oaks, but certainly a very nice turf filly for Christophe Clement. Gam's mission, Matt, uh, this is a filly who has uh, uh, finished second in her first start and has reeled off three straight wins. They're not necessarily super impressive, the daughter of Noble Mission. But one of the things I like about her, Matt, are the silks. I don't know if you mentioned yeah. Those are forego silks, and we don't get to see forego silks a lot anymore these days. Yeah, you beat me to the punch, Brian. I was going to bring that up and say, come on, you and I, uh, you and I got to have a sentimental spot because I remember one of uh, 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 Gam's Mission's early races and looking at the PPs, and I'm like seeing the owner, Lazy F Ranch, which, which sent me on a... Uh, uh, a trip into the internet trying to figure out if in fact it was the same Lazy F ranch and it was the same family and it is. Uh, it's the, I don't know, if, I don't remember at this point if it's the daughter or the granddaughter of uh, Forgo's winner, Martha Gary, uh, um, but, it, but it is the family, it is the same silk, it is Lazy F ranch and, and uh, uh, Forgo was a favorite of both of us. Yeah, absolutely. And Gam's Mission is a filly who probably is moving up a little bit in class. She's coming off a win in the grade three regret last time. Uh, this looks tougher because I think Khan, Le Khan Lima and uh, Plum Ali are, are maybe a, a little tougher American filly that she's faced. But she's getting good. She might want a mile and a quarter with that breeding. So don't throw her out. You can't throw out higher truth either, Matt. A daughter of Galileo, trained by Chad Brown, Irish bred. She's won two in a row. Two in a row, Chad Brown, up and coming. You can't, uh, you can't throw her out. And uh, just back to Gam's mission for a second. Uh, she's trained by young, by young up and coming trainer Cherie DeVoe, who learned, uh, who learned her trade for many years under Chad Brown. That's exactly right, Matt. Higher Truth uh, is one to watch for Chad Brown. You got some Europeans in here. I, I both think who bring a little bit of class. I like Serana a little bit more. She's a group three winner in France. Nizuna has something uh, to like as well, though. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, we, uh, she's already made a trip over uh, in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly Turf, finished 10th in there. But her 2021 debut at Epson in a group three was a very impressive second for a quality trainer uh, that could have, could have her on her way. Yeah, yeah, I, I certainly like Santa Barbara's second in the Pretty Polly better, but you're right, Azuna ran very well in her three-year-old debut last time, and she'll have much higher odds than Santa Barbara in the Belmont Oaks. All right, Matt, that's our look at these two big turf races at Belmont Park. It's time to get down to brass tacks and make our picks. The Belmont Derby, I'll let you go first. Belmont Derby, I am going with the uh, trainer switch from Bob Baffert to Bill Mott. I'm putting du jour on top. Wow, and that's, uh, that's uh, different than me for reasons of distance. And for reasons of distance and class, I, I, I'm going to Bolshoi Ballet. I think that uh, uh, English Derby was a draw a line through the race. I think he's the class of the race. So he's my <laughs> top pick. Who, who's your long shot, Matt? My long shot, Brian, and, and you mentioned it before. We don't know how much of a long shot he's going to be. I'm going with Sainthood. Yeah, St. Hood, that wild card. And, and uh, you know, I think hard love would be my long shot, but I have a feeling he's going to get bet a little bit, so I'm going to stay away from him. Tokyo Gold becomes my long shot over Hidden Enemy. I just thought he looked really good in winning that 
Derby Italiano, as you like to say, Matt. All right, that's my long shot. Belmont Oaks. Belmont Oaks, we need a top pick from you, my friend. Top pick from me is going to be Con Lima uh, on a roll for Todd Pletcher, both the horse and the stable. Yeah, and it's hard for me. It's really hard for me to pick against Santa Barbara. But you know me, Matt. I don't like to pick favorites in both spots here. So I'm going to uh, try to beat Aiden O'Brien in one of these two races. And I'm going to do it because I think the American Phillies might just have a little bit more class than the American Colts. Con Lima is my pick too. And the reason I'm picking her is because I'm seeing a very slow pace develop. I think she can go a long way on the lead. Who's your long shot, Matt? I'm going with a, with a legitimate long shot number wise. I'm going with Nazuna, who we were talking about just before. Yeah, and I'm going with the other European long shot. I'm going with Serana because I, I like her form in France. All right, those are top picks and long shots for the Belmont Derby, the Belmont Oaks, Matt. What's next on our queue? Looks like we're going to talk a little bit of Haskell. And I was very, you know me, Matt. I was very happy to see that Hot Rod Charlie is working really well since that big performance in the Belmont. I love his performance in the Belmont, Matt. I've liked Hot Rod Charlie for a while now. He was my pick in the Derby. Uh, Matt, he is uh, confirmed as a starter. We already knew about Mandaloon, but I think Hot Rod Charlie is making the Haskell a very interesting race now for me, which is just over a week away. Just over a week away. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, next week uh, at uh, Monmouth Park, just down the road from where I live. So I'll be able to go out there uh, a few days before the race and I'll be there at the uh, at the Haskell, I'll be there to get our producer, Tony Bada Bing, a uh, Haskell hat. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited also about uh, following C for Todd Pletcher, that horse that was transferred from Baffert to uh, Pletcher that has looked so good um, in his recent start. I think he's uh, confirmed also for the race. Yeah, it's, it's shaping up nicely. We got some horses that we know are going to be more fillers in the Haskell, so we're not going to see a tiny field. We also know Amanda Lewin's been pointing for this race for a while. I'm excited about Hot Rod Charlie. I, I think you all can guess who's going to be my top pick when we talk Haskell next week. Midnight Bourbon looks like he will go for trainer Steve Asmussen. We're still waiting to find out about Ron Bauer. We're still waiting to find out about Weyburn, but they could only add to a really good Haskell. Medina Spirit, though, Matt, we know will not make the trip. Uh, Bob Baffert saying he's just not ready after uh, hit running in the Derby in the Preakness. Yeah, Kel surprise on that one, Brian. Uh, the decision on Ron Bauer, I think, is supposed to come on Wednesday, and Wednesday also is the day of the draw for the Haskell. So that means we'll be back next week, Matt, next Thursday with a big show. We're talking Haskell, and then we're talking about opening weekend weekends at both Del Mar and Saratoga. So next week is going to be a big show. But for now, can I get a parting shot from you? Yeah, you're right, Brian. Uh, we're on the verge of the, the two big elite summer meetings uh, coming along. So uh, we know when those uh, tracks open that a lot of our time on Horse Center is going to be spelled, spelled with the stakes races at Saratoga and out west at Del Mar. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they, they don't uh, slow down on any weekend pretty much at Saratoga or Del Mar. Del Mar, of course, has a little bit extra meaning maybe this year because it's the host of the Breeders' Cup in early November. But Saratoga is always the best race mate of the year. I think we have the Diana as the headliner next weekend, opening weekend at Saratoga, grade one on turf for Phillies and Mares. We also have the San Diego, which will become a long-term prep for the Breeders' Cup Classic on opening Saturday at Del Mar. So a lot to talk about next week. Don't miss next week's show, folks. I want to thank our uh, producer, Tony Bada Bing, the best producer out there. It looks like, Tony, you got some hats coming your way. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the great race graphics she provides. Thanks to all you for watching every week. We sure do appreciate it. Who else, Matt? Derby Wars. Hey, they're the best contest site out there. Let's not forget our sponsor. As I said, next week is a no miss, can't miss, do not miss show. Matt and I will be back next week here on Horse Center.